A blessed and pleasant good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is Monday, the 25th day of October. <laughs> I almost said December. The 25th day of October, and it's a bright and sunny day here in Dangriga. I think this is day two of sunshine. We've had seven or five days of constant rain here in Dangriga, and it's beautiful to see a dead calm sea with a bright orange sun. The only problem is that there's hardly any wind, and so living in front of the beach, I have sunflies and mosquito, but that's okay. It's a beautiful day to be alive. We're going to kick things off today with one entitled, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Let's have a listen. A lovely one there entitled, I want to walk as a child of delight. 
We're going to continue then with getting our words here up on screen for today, October the 25th in 2021. And let's see if we could do that in three, two, one. Here we go. <laughs> I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Words from Psalm 122, verse 1. Using versicle 1, and if you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Our invitatory prayer. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle, the Jubilate, which is based on Psalm 100 and can be found on page 37 in our books of common prayer. O oh, shout to the Lord in triumph for the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good, his loving mercy is forever, and his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause briefly to call to mind those things that, in thought, word, or deed, we would have done, that would have been displeasing to God, that would have been unjust to our neighbors, or perhaps would have been unkind, even to our very selves. For these times and these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life, which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. At this time, we will have the reading of our Psalms, and our Psalms for this morning are Psalm 41 and Psalm 52. And leading us in the Psalm this morning is Miss Arlet Gomez. Let's have a listen. Morning. The Psalms chosen for today is Psalms 41 and 52. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive. So they so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me. When will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, 
Be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast and shall set, and shall, shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord, our God of Israel, from age to age. Amen, amen. Psalm 52 You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin, your tongue is like a sharpened razor, O worker of deception. You love evil more than good, and lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt, O you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling, and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble, and they shall laugh at him, saying, this is the one who did not take God for refuge and trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever, world without end. Amen. I would like to say happy birthday to my big sister Carol today, and happy birthday to my mom, whose birthday is tomorrow. We want to thank Miss Arlette for leading us in that reading for this morning. And indeed, she's reading in honor of her sister, Miss Carol Moore, who is celebrating a birthday today. And of course, you've heard that Miss Maud is celebrating a birthday tomorrow. We continue with our second canticle for this morning, the Benedictus, based on Luke chapter 1, verse 68 through to 79. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of all to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our forebearers and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we have the reading of the Old Testament lesson, and the Old Testament lesson will be read for us by Miss Shakira Smith, and it is taken from Zechariah chapter 1, verse 7 through to 17. Let's have a listen. The reading is taken from Zechariah chapter 1, verses 7 to 17. On the 24th day of the 11th month, the month of Shabbat, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Zechariah, son of Berechiah, son of Edo. And Zechariah said, In the night I saw a man riding on a red horse. He was standing among the myrtle trees in the glen, and behind him were red, sorrel, and white horses. Then I said, What are these, my lord? The angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. So the man who was standing among the myrtle trees answered, They are those whom the Lord has sent to patrol the earth. Then they spoke to the angels of the Lord, who was standing among the myrtle trees. We have patrolled the earth, and lo, and the earth remains at peace. 
Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you withhold mercy from Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, with which you have been angry these 70 years? Then the Lord replied with gracious and comforting words to the angel who talked with him. So the angel who talked with me said to me, Proclaim this message. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am very jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion, and I am extremely angry with the nations that are at ease. For while I was only a little angry, they made the disaster worse. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I have returned to Jerusalem with compassion. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and the measuring line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. Proclaim farther. Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities shall again overflow with prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and again choose Jerusalem. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Shakira for reading. And of course, she is reading in honor of her aunt whose birthday is today, Miss Carol Moore. If you give me a second then to get back to the beginning of the reading from Zechariah, you might be wondering, well, Rev, how we jump to, there we go, how we jump to Zechariah from where we were the last time we were together in Ezra. And of course, this is the continuation of prophecy. And Zechariah, of course, is giving this prophecy now. This is the first of two visions that Zechariah will have. And he's the prophet of his time. And this is in the reign of King Darius right and Darius of course was one of the the Babylonian kings and this is at the time where the remnant is returning from their 70 years of exile in Babylon so where we were in Ezra where we are looking at the rebuilding of the temple and the sending home of the people from exiles in Babylon to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. Zechariah is one of the prophets who is on the scene at the time. So you see, again, remember that the Bible, the books of the Bible are not necessarily arranged in chronological order. So in order to get a chronological story, you will have to move from book to book. And that is important because some people think that when you read the Bible from the beginning to the end, it is one continuous story. The Bible has one continuous story, which happens to be the name of a version of the Bible. The Bible has one continuous story, moves from place to place in order to piece the entire story together. You see, what it is, is that while Ezra is writing as a prophet on the scene, Zechariah is also a prophet on the scene, and both are writing from their perspective what is happening with them and what they see happening around them. So remember that when you read the Bible, please, because that is important that sometimes we don't take things too literally when we see them in the Bible. Anyhow, Zechariah served the Lord in the years after the remnant return from the Babylonian exile, and his prophetic career begins in the reign of Darius, who is the ruler of the Medes and the Persians. And Zechariah's career was not marked by the reign of a king over Israel or Judah, because there was no king of Israel or Judah during this period after the exile. Remember that the king had been in exile as well in Babylon and the king that was placed over Jerusalem was a puppet king who had come to ruin and his sons after him. And Zechariah's timing of his prophecy is set two months before Haggai's first prophecy. And within a month after another prophecy of, of Haggai, Zechariah makes a second prophecy. And this is an interesting thing because like Haggai, Zechariah's message is one of encouragement. It is one of letting the people know that the presence of the Lord is, is with them. Yes. And you know what? It is a rich use of vision, really. There is a lot of symbols and, and pictures and it, it sounds like the book of Revelation and the book of, of Daniel with, with so many significant visions of things to come and the imagery used in them really, really sounds similar to those. And speaking of Revelation and Daniel, there is a $95 US course that Codrington College is putting off, um, I think, beginning next Wednesday, which is six Wednesdays long. Um, an Old Testament look at Daniel and Revelation. So I've signed up for that one because, well, 
You know, I love prophecies and I love the Old Testament. And you might say Revelation and Daniel are New Testament books. But when you look at the revelations and the way they work alongside prophecy, it's just beautiful. Anyhow, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah. And little is known about this prophet yet. Zechariah is a common name in the Old Testament. And there are at least 27 different Zacharias mentioned in the Bible. Yes. And the only details given about this Zechariah comes from the book of Ezra chapter 5 and 6 and then this portion of scripture that we have here. And it tells us that he is the son of Berechiah, who is the son of Edo. Yes, and his lineage is clearly being established in order to show that he was from a family that was faithful to God. Yes, and Zechariah's name means the Lord remembers. And it is a fitting name for the prophecy of restoration that Zechariah is bringing. This prophet is called to encourage and mobilize God's people to accomplish the task that they had begun, yes, but yet had lost some momentum for the completion. Imagine you are given some resources to go back and build the temple, but halfway through the job you realize, okay, rebuilding the temple means rebuilding the city, means the resources we have are not the most, are not the best, are not sufficient. And so they are losing faith that they could finish this job that they had started. Yes, and Zechariah's prophecy will come to encourage them indirectly by telling them about God's care for them and by keeping the presence of the Messiah very much in their, in their mind. Yes, and he will be prophesying at the time of Haggai. Zerubbabel will also be on the scene. Ezra, we know, on this, is on the scene prophesying as well. And he is there along with them prophesying of words of encouragement. But he also warns them of the consequence of neglecting God's work. And he emphasizes that God wants to do this work through his people. And that's the key of his message. And that's what I want us to focus on today. Yeah? A lot of the times we get a call, we get a feeling in our heart that God is calling us to accomplish something for his name. And generally we start out with great fire and great zeal to want to get it done. Yes. And we sit and we pray and we plan and we say, well, this could go this way. And a lot of the time we see the vision that God has placed on our hearts and we see the opening of the vision and we could envision the ending of it, the completion. But we don't necessarily see the obstacles that may lie in the journey to get to the end from the beginning. And so most of the time when we start out with a great passion for the things of God, we meet an obstacle, we pray, we get over it. We meet another obstacle, we pray, we take a little longer to get over that. And the more obstacle we meet, the more obstacles we meet, the, the less enthused we become about accomplishing for God. And if it's a journey to be a server for the Lord in terms of ministry, if it is a journey to provide a ministry or an outreach in the church, when we face confrontation, we are tempted to think, man, but I am here trying to do good for God and look at the obstacles these people are putting in my way. And we fail to realize sometimes, we fail to remember that there are consequences to neglecting the work of God that he has begun in us. And when God has called you to a work, to accomplish a work through you for his people, you have to trust that no matter what the obstacles are, he will bring you through it. He will help you to overcome. Because if he has ordained you to do a job for the glory of his kingdom, you best believe that he is going to get it finished. You have to understand that God might not always call the equip, but God will always equip those whom he calls. And that is key to remember. And Jesus will tell us in the New Testament that no one sets their hand to the plow and look back. Yes? Yes? No matter the challenges that might lie ahead and the rough patches that you have to plow through, no one sets their hand to the plow and, then, and, then, and turns back. Whoever sets their hands to the plow and turns back is unworthy of the kingdom, Jesus will tell us. And the message is same coming from Zechariah to the, to the people who are struggling to finish the completion of this temple. He's letting them know, listen to me, he who began a good work in you is going to be faithful to complete it if you stick with him. 
And in the vision of, of Zechariah, yes, it is God pleading with his people, come back to me. Come back to me. I was angry with your fathers, but now you come back to me because I will come back to you. Don't be like your father. Yes? Don't be like your fathers for whom the former prophet preached. Yeah? Turn now from your evil ways and from your evil deeds. Listen to me and do what I am asking you to do. And he goes on to tell them that he was very angry with their forefathers. But now he wants to give them prosperity and peace. And he tells them or he gives them the vision of the four horses among the myrtle trees. And that's what Zachariah's vision is. It's of four horses and their riders. And it's interesting because this sounds like the four horses we will see in Revelation, right? And the four horses that Daniel will talk about, yes? And a man riding on a red horse. And Zachariah's vision was simple enough in what he saw. One man on horseback leading other horses and their riders, patrolling to and fro on the earth. And he saw them among myrtle trees in a ravine, which is a, a hollow or a ditch, yes? And it seems like this is almost like a reconnaissance mission. People coming to check on the progress of the rebuilding of Jerusalem and the other cities of Judah, yes? And it's almost as if though these writers in division are here to examine the work of God's people to see how it's going, yes? And in division, he says to, to the Lord, who are these? Yes, and the angel that is with him says to him, I will show you what they are. And so the man who was standing among the myrtle trees answered, These are those whom the Lord has sent to patrol the earth. They are there to see. And the colors of the men, red, sorrel, and white. Yes, and many Bible commentators and theologians debate the meaning of these colors, connecting them with the four horsemen of Revelation 6. But that doesn't seem to work in some instances. Because these seem to be observers and not messengers of judgment. Yeah? And interesting, the colors. Sorrel is a brownish orange, which God's has a more fading color. And of course, red is bright and vibrant. And white is neutral and peaceful. And it seems the colors have a message to bring in what he saw. And myrtle trees is type of a evergreen that symbolized that the presence of the Lord was there with them to give them life, you know? And the colors and the horsemen examining all seem to be bringing a message of continue because you have hope. And it's beautiful because the angel of the Lord now in verse 11 through to 17 will intercede for Jerusalem and Judah. Yeah. The angel of the Lord who was standing among the myrtle trees says, We have patrolled the earth and lo, the whole earth remains at peace. Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you withhold mercy from Jerusalem and, and the cities of Judah, with which you have been angry these 70 years? So the angels who come to survey the work happening are now interceding for Jerusalem to the Lord. And patrolling and finding the world at peace uh, maybe it was not the right kind of peace, but you know what? It's relative peace. God was angry with the nations of the world because they were at ease while God's people suffer. And now God's people were out of exile and trying to be restore their lives. And this was a sense of rest, even, in, even though the fact that they were rebuilding meant some hardship, but there was relative peace. Nobody was assaulting them or attacking them. They were not enslaved. They had been released from their bondage in Babylon, and there was relative peace. And the Lord had even caused the nations of the, the, the nations around them to offer help to returning exiles. Yeah? But even their help in some instances were laced with evil motives. But relative peace, and God had relented and allowed Israel back into this relative peace after 70 years of exile. And that is another point for us. Sometimes the hardships we have to go through before we get to the paradise that God has promised takes a while. And we live in a microwave society where we want it done and we want it now. The truth is, it doesn't always work that way. 
in working to do the will of God, we have to trust in God's timing. Not everything we want to accomplish because God has given us a divine design that we are supposed to carry out means that we accomplish it in our time. What does the Bible say? A day in your court is like a thousand years and a thousand years like one day. We don't know how quickly the vision will come to pass. And sometimes we get the vision to lay the foundation and it's not even ours to complete. It's ours to plant the seed. And these exiles had to wait 70 years before they could come out of exile to try to do what the Lord wanted them to do. And they get back into the promised land now, find it in desolation, and find all the challenges now that will happen in trying to rebuild. And they are losing hope. And the Lord sends word. Yes, the Lord replies in verse 13. Whoops, I've gone too far. In verse 13. Yes, I will reply with gracious and comforting words. And the Lord says, I am jealous for Jerusalem and Zion. In other words, I love them. I want best for them. I'm extremely angry with the nations that are at ease while my people suffer. Yes. Therefore, says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with compassion and my house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts. And that's a promise. That's a good promise. God solemnly promised to restore Jerusalem and the cities of Judah. And it must have been especially comforting for the prophet to hear these words. And those who believed and relied on the prophet for guidance from God must have been especially comforted hearing this promise, considering how lowly the conditions of the cities of the promised land was in Zechariah's day. And the temple was going to rebuild, be rebuilt four years after Zechariah gave this prophecy. So they were already in the land about four years and they had to work four years more before they build the temple to completion. So eight years after coming out, they go through difficulty after difficulty on the journey to accomplish what God had set them free to do. And I don't know how long you have been working on what God has sent you to do. But I am here to tell you like Zechariah, do not give up. Do not give up. Because if he has given you a dream, if he has given you a call, then you are supposed to trust in him to walk with him so that he could bring it to fulfillment. You see, it's not yours to fulfill. You are simply a tool in the completion of what he has started. That is like the hammer saying, I will build a house. A hammer can't build a house unless there is one who picks it up to guide it to striking nail. We are but tools in the rebuilding of the kingdom of God. It is our duty to allow he who is the master builder to use us when where and how he chooses. <laughs> Amen. We continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 42. Together we profess our faith saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. <clears throat> he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, 
Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. For our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage A, which can be found on page 44 in our books of Common Prayer. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. Our first collet for today is the collet for proper 25, which can be found on page 180 in our Books of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gift of faith, hope, and charity, that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We say call it number three on page 45. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit that we may seek in everything to know your will and knowing it may gladly perform it to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we turn to our personal prayers of intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. Celebrating a birthday on Friday was Miss Taylor Henry. Celebrating a birthday yesterday was Mrs. Anna Oliveira Reyes, Miss Corrine Bradley, Mr. Sean Quillen, and Miss Derla Antonio. Celebrating a birthday today is the Reverend Aaron Charles, Miss Jacqueline Burns, Miss Jalen Rogers, and Mrs. Carol Moore. We pray, ladies and gentlemen, that you will have a blessed and beautiful birthday and that God's blessings continue to be upon you all the days of your lives. Happy birthday! We continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for the following individuals. We pray for Miss Judith, Miss Ines, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Varil, Miss Marilyn, Miss Verilyn, and Miss Julie. We pray for Miss Monica, Miss Eileen, Miss Des, Miss Aislin, Miss Justine, Miss Allison, Miss Soila, Miss Beryl, Miss Janet, Miss Nina, Miss Elena, and Miss Avelina. We pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Sylvia, Miss Janice. Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Leslie, Miss Crystal, Miss Amelia, Miss Olga, Miss Ilona, Miss Donna, and Miss Catherine. We remember and pray for Miss Mary, Miss Rita, Miss Marva, Miss Marcia, Miss Celestina, Miss Jessica, Miss LaShawn, Miss Althea, Miss Anisetta, Miss Eve, Miss Carolyn, Miss Angel, Miss Bernadette, Miss Tisby, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Kim, Miss Arlette, Miss Betty, Miss Geraldine, Miss Glenda, Miss Dominique, Miss Mariani, and Miss Harris. We pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, and Mr. Walter. We pray for Mr. Rudolph, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Oscar, Mr. Freddy, Father Hardy, Mr. Charles, and Mr. Dion. We pray for Mr. Eliseo, Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Ian, Mr. Robert, Mr. Ishmael, Father Jerris, and Mr. Edmundo. We pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Ian, Father Constancio, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Michael Soberanis, and Mr. Michael Griffith. 
In our prayers, we pray for the sick and shut in members of our parish family. I ask your prayers specifically for those of the Christ the King parish family. Remembering Mr. Eds, Miss Elva, Mr. Austin, Miss Amy, Miss Gladys, Miss Jean, Miss Ismay. We pray for those who care for the infirmed, praying for Miss O, Miss Linda, Miss Joyce Lynn, Miss Sonia, and Miss Monica. In our prayers this morning, we continue to ask for God's comfort and peace upon those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. This morning, we remember the family of Miss Georgia Casey, the family of Miss Sonia Leslie, the family of Miss Thomas Alvarez, the family of Miss Ernestine Peters, the family of Miss Niani Jones, the family of Mr. James Martin, the family of Miss Laura Diego, the family of Mr. Albert Juan, the family of Mr. Ernest and Grace Brannan, the family of Miss Helena Kemp, the family of Mr. Alexander Palacio, the family of Miss Myrtle Sheeran, and the family of Mr. Darnell Swasso. In memory today, we pray for the family of Mr. Talbert Brackett, who died on the 24th of October in 2008. We ask for God's comfort and peace to rest upon all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. And we pray for eternal rest for those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection for our loved ones who are far away from us. We remember in our prayers, our students, Tammy, Ashley, Anwar, Brittany, Karina, Ria, Courtney, and Akua. We pray for our loved ones in the military, praying for Emil, Jade, Charles, and Barry at this time. We continue to pray for the protection and enablement of all medical professionals in the performance of their duties. We remember and pray for Dr. Molina, Manzanero, Shogreen, Arana, Joseph, Sosa, and Cuellar. We pray for Nurse McKin, Gil, Herrera, Aurel, Sherby, Joycelyn, Alberta, Aaron, Alejandra, and Olivia. We continue to pray for healing for persons who are infected with COVID-19, those in the various isolation wards. We pray for the continued ready availability of a cure or vaccine for this disease. And indeed, we pray for the containment and elimination of this COVID-19. In our prayers, we continue to pray for the combating of the economic fallout caused by this pandemic. We pray for those industries most severely hit. We pray for persons who would have lost employment, pers persons who are struggling to make ends meet. We pray for the most vulnerable in our society, for the poor, the needy, the elderly, those with pre-existing health conditions. We continue to pray for God's protection and discernment over our security forces, the government, the churches, the private sector, all non-governmental organizations involved in the fight against COVID-19. We remember and pray for the members of the international community most severely affected by this pandemic. And we pray for God's protection over ourselves and our region against the ravages of natural disasters. We remember as well those persons who are engaged in recovery efforts having faced a natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your law and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever, we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer this morning. It is a blessing and a privilege to be able to greet each new day in the presence of God and to greet this new day in your presence as well. A bright and sunny morning. I am loving the sunshine outside after these five days of rain. I want to thank those of you who joined us for our um 
Eucharist broadcast yesterday from the cathedral. We want to thank Father Taylor and Deacon Dawson, as well as the pupils and teachers of the Anglican Cathedral College for leading us in that service yesterday. We want to thank Bishop Wright and Mrs. Wright, as well as the other members of the online ministry team for ensuring that we had that service up and running yesterday. For those of you who joined in for the virtual harvest presentation from the children of St. Matthew's School yesterday evening for Children's um, Bible Minutes at 4 p.m., we want to thank you for joining in for that. Next week, Sunday, we will be featuring on Children's Bible Minutes the Children of Christ the King Anglican Schools. And of course, if there are any churches out there who are having virtual presentations of their children, any Anglican churches or schools, and you would like to broadcast that program through Children's Bible Minutes, do drop me a line in our Facebook chat and um, we can work something out. I love watching our children's harvest presentations. It reminds me of the days when I had to memorize the words of we plow the field and scatter. <laughs> I had so much fun. I want to thank you though for your continual support of the work and the ministry of the Anglican Diocese of Belize and I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast at noonday, we will have children's Bible. We will have noonday prayers that will be followed at 2.30 by children's Bible minutes, where we continue our look at the catechism. Following that, we have evening prayer at 5.30 and then compline to close the day at 9 p.m. I know you might be busy, but I want to thank you now for joining us in any or all of those broadcasts as your schedule may permit. And I want to say a special thanks to those persons in the online ministry team that keep these programs coming. We're going to wrap up today then with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close this morning with one that I have come to enjoy. This one is called, where is it now? It is called Joyous Light of God's Own Glory. You might not recognize the words, but I am sure you will recognize the tune. I do pray you have a blessed and beautiful day. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless and bye for now.